Hello everyone, it is Irene Public Studs here to do an official review of LEGO Star Wars at 75290, the most icely cantina, coming with 3,187 pieces, ages 18 and up, and retailing for $350. Now, starting off, we have a beautiful black box art of the Mos Eisley Cantina with some great, amazing depictions of the set, which we will get into shortly. Here is the little logo. There is the little Twin Sons where it says Master Builder Series, and I really love that they did this as opposed to UCS set since it isn't really accurate, but it looks really cool and is a fun play set. You will notice there is a beautiful selection of all the minifigures on the back of the box art, and then we will turn it around, and there is an absolutely gorgeous picture of all the little features as well as some playability and just all that super, super fun stuff. And even on the side of the box, there is a absolutely beautiful depiction of this little moisture evaporator with the little Lego Star Wars logo. So first up, we have Greedo. This figure is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really, really do love it. It comes with both sides printing, obviously a beautiful mold. I love my Lego Star Wars aliens. Let's move into the next one. Here we have Han Solo. Nothing super exciting about Han Solo. He comes with a double-sided face, which is kind of nice. Here's Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's pretty cool. He comes with his lightsaber. He comes with the new, new hood. He also comes with some nice back printing. Here we have Farmberry Luke. I cannot communicate how much I dislike this figure. He also comes with an alternate head and back printing. Here's C-3PO. He's really not that exciting. And here's R2-D2. Beautiful figure. 20 years old. It's still epic. Here we have Chewie with his stud shooter bowcaster, and he is the last of the uninteresting figures. Now, starting off with our amazing interesting figures uh, is Garadan, or better known, the Imperial Spy. He comes with a nice cape. He comes with a pretty plain torso. I love the way they did his head. So basically, it is this cape piece over this uh, gunmetal gray piece, and this is its own little piece that kind of slides off. You'd see, like, look at that. Kind of wiggles off. I don't believe he, he does come with back printing. He comes with a nice little pistol. Beautiful, beautiful figure. I love this guy so incredibly much. Here is Woohoo the bartender. Fun fact about him, the reason he doesn't have droids in the bar is because droids killed the original owner of the cantina, who was a Wookiee, which is actually a fun fact. And you turn that around, he gets some nice printing over here, and he gets some, you know, disturbed printing instead of, you know, angry printing. Here we have one of the Bith musicians with a golden musical instrument. Here we have a beautiful Bith musician with a silver instrument and a very cool head mold, the same with the other one. And here is a Bith musician with a black instrument, which is very neat. Here is a beautiful Jawa minifigure. He comes with his special little torso printing. I really like the way they do that. I love the way they do the Jawas. I don't know why they don't use the new cape piece on them, but I, whatever. And he also comes with back printing, which is pretty neat. Here is Herchek Kalfas, or whatever you pronounce his name. Herkulf Kalfas. Uh, he is really neat. He is a Trandoshan. He comes with the same mold as Bosk, but in tan. Very neat figure. I love the lime green color. I love the jacket piece. And he just is super cool looking overall. Here is Cave. He is certainly one of the more controversial figures. I overall like him. I think his face is kind of funny. I think I would have preferred a mold, but it looks like they almost ran out of time. I believe the ears are a new piece, however. Uh, they do come with special printing in there, which a lot of people forget, but it is still a cool little dude. Nonetheless, love the orange jacket. Here is the Sand Trooper. Nothing extraordinarily special. You turn him around. He gets his nice uh, black side cape, and he also comes with his beautiful backpack. I love the Sand Troopers. They are fantastic. Here is the Sand Trooper Squad Leader, which is really cool. I like him. Obviously, he comes with orange, and he comes with binoculars, but it is the same deal all around. Uh, you know, if you're curious about the face paint, uh, piece, it is this, and with the other guy, it is this one. So, you know, nothing super exciting, but if that's something you really care about, like if that's a defining point of the set, there you go. Here's my boy, Momo Nadin. Love this guy. He comes with beautiful toe printing. I love the torso printing. The headpiece is really hard to get, and I'm super glad it came in the set. Turn him around, get a nice, beautiful print. I think they could have done this in brown, uh, but, you know, other than that, I think it looks nice. Here is Satan. I'm not even going to call him Labria. They got the original costume from a Halloween store. It's Satan. Uh, you know, pretty interesting. I like the guy. I also love that he comes with an alternate face print of him just looking like, yes, yes, that's a quite interesting thing. Uh, you know, he comes with a nice back printing, which is always fine and dandy and very cool. Here we have my boy, Dr. Evazon. Love this guy. He comes with some nice, beautiful, uh, you know, torso printing. I love the way his chest is just showing out like that. And then he gets some nice back printing. And he also gets another alternate angry face before, you know, he 
It turns this way. Uh, it, it's a perfect face for Wrecker, I will say that much. Finally, we have my guy, Ponda Baba, the last of these figures. He is obviously one of the more exciting ones of this set. Although I think they did a pretty poor job on him. I do not like the way it just kind of hangs over like that. That, that sounds wrong, especially because of the shape of him. Um, but yeah, it is certainly uh, not a great mold. I think they could have done better with him. Uh, but I still think he looks cool nonetheless. Love the jacket. No leg torso print or no leg printing. Uh, but yeah, that is my boy, Ponda Baba. Now it is time for the mini builds. First off, we have this awesome little speeder. These guys are honestly actually great for rebellion speeders. I remember these were in the Empire at War campaign. These were the characters they used. Uh, so basically, you could have one guy sitting in here with this nice little control panel you see of most icily, and you could just sit him down, and you have to sit him a certain way because you know he won't fit another way. And that is how you fit him in. You also get some nice stickering, and I'm not going to cover that too much, but it is a beautiful, beautiful build. You get some nice tiling down there. And then if you want, you could even stick, say, Moma Naden in here so we could control this beautiful little thing. You get a little control panel. You get all these things. Love the engine. I think this was a beautiful inclusion, and I don't know where else we would have seen this, but I'm really happy they did it. Now, I am not 100% sure what this exactly is. I know it's in the Battlefront campaign. It feels a little smaller than that. Um, but yeah, so it's very cool. You get this nice little build. I want to call it an escape pod, but I know it isn't. Uh, there's a nice little control panel in there. And all you really have to do is take, say, a figure like Rito, sit him down, and you close it up, and it works just fine. Uh, you know, not a huge deal, but I certainly think it is interesting, and the stickering is all nice and dandy. Now, this actually comes in two parts, technically. These two are not really officially together, so I'll in review them separately. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure if they're, like, a part of the same store and you just connect them differently. Uh, but yeah, so here is the Jawa Trading Shack. You get this beautiful little design with that cloth. You get some nice little parts here. You get welding. You get the special Imperial Crate, which we'll talk about later on. You also get a door, which can just hold up like this. It's pretty simple and you just lock it into place by pushing up all the way and it stays and you can put it down same way there's some clips here for the cantina and you could lift this up too if you want some interior access but the best way to get interior access is to do this you open this beautiful thing up over there you will get some nice broomage and you will also get a nice little blaster which is great and you also get some binoculars up here you get a little wrench you get a little mug which is all fine and dandy i've had some problems with this specific piece staying aboard a board aboard oh my gosh and yeah so there's also this little sw swiveling turret platform thing and all you have to do is put the Jawa on there, say, and you can just close it up and it fits perfectly fine. The Jawa can go and sell you his merchandising. Uh, by the way, buy my merch. And then let's move into the other building. Here's certainly one of the more creative buildings. We'll spin it around. You get some nice outer detailing. The building looks beautiful. This is like a little scanner. Uh, there's a beautiful door. I love the little print right here. There is a crate. And in this crate, you get a little tire wheel, which is fun, but... It's just really neat, and you have a lot of that in this set. This is this nice build here. I'm not 100% sure what it's for, uh, but it's supposed to be, like, sitting in this crate. You also have a nice clip here if you want to clip the building on a certain way. There's also more clips here. Uh, there is also this little structure here, which is a roof. Uh, I don't know if this is a vent or what have you. Um, and then, yeah, so you're going to turn this around. You will look in, and there are some beautiful pots and tools. And you can leave and look up and from the top hit angle. And you will see there is this beautiful little structure, which you take off to, you know, play figures around in. There's also this area back here. You get a crowbar, you get a little bucket, and you get a little bag. And this comes with a special kyber crystal piece. It's not really special, but, you know, I think it's actually inspired by the special cartoon. I don't know what the cartoon was. I think it was... I think that was from the Yoda Chronicles where they had to steal the Holocron from Tatooine and the Jawas all found them. So that might be what this is. Tell me in the comments down below. Now it is time to get into the Cantina build. Now here is the biggest set I've ever reviewed on my channel. I think up to now, give or take. Um, but it is certainly not the most expensive, just the largest. And yeah, let's get started with the Dubac. So here is the Dubak. First off, I want to show you him in his regular primal form. So all you have to do is take off these pieces uh, in order to do that. You get this nice little extra piece, which they give you. And he is a beautiful, natural Dubak in his natural habitat. He comes with some special teeth, which is really kind of dopey looking. His eyes look great. 
I love the printing all over him, obviously. Uh, pretty interesting mold. I'm glad they kept the mold and didn't stick brick built with this one. Now, let's try him on with the little backpack. So, here is the dewback. He is pretty cool. Now, obviously, he is certainly one of the more unique things. So, you could basically get them to, you know, steer him and the stormtroopers really get to play around with him. Uh, you can put this little thing. This is, uh, guess what they use to carry around. I, I don't even know what that's called. There's also another clip for binoculars. You get some little packs back here. I think it works really well. Let's check out his habitat. Now his habitat's actually detachable. It's this little thing that's connected. This was added in the special editions of Star Wars. It comes with a little bone and a little uh, piece of water as well as all this detailing, which is super nice. And you know, uh, the metal plate or whatever. Uh, he stands there pretty well. You can have him, you know, drink. Let me just move him properly. There he is. And he could drink a nice little bit out of his water. There's this ring here. And this little build just slides in just perfectly. Uh, into there with some Technic, little coordination, and it looks really, really good. Over here is the smaller moisture evaporator. This one also comes off with ease. You plug it in all over the place. I like the way this one looks. Uh, let's say a look at the other one. Here he is. He is certainly much more easy to detach. He covers this corner pretty well. Um, so yeah, so the deal with this guy is he is connected to this little side platform over here. You just Clip him off. He is certainly, you know, the hardest part when transporting this set. Um, he comes with some nice little detailing all around and is very, very epic and works really, really well with the set. And here you get this empty area. It's basically just a bunch of crates. This is uh, where one of our Imperial crates is. I believe we get a few of these. Love these things. They are so cool. He comes with, they all come with binoculars, um, which is neat. Uh, you know, you also have some special features back here, which we'll cover in a bit. You also have a nice little stud hopper with a little crate that has a wrench in here, uh, which is fine and dandy, covered up by some plates. And then over here, you have another crate, uh, which comes with a little piece of binoculars. I guess they're, binoculars and wrenches tend to be all the hype uh, in, on Tatooine these days. Before you can do that, you need to take off this nice little thing that covers the area pretty well. I love the way it fits around where the bar is and just kind of uh, goes from there. Like this little build, it's really neat. And now let's open up the canteen. So it's pretty simple. You just have to find the right area and just pull kind of. It's pretty simple. And like so, you have a opened up cantina. Now, let's take a look starting from over here because this is, you know, we're just going to work our way around. Now, that is a surprisingly difficult area to get into. Um, but yeah, so anyway, there's some a nice swivel chair back here. There is the droid sensor. So if you have a little droid walk in, it'll shoot them up. Just kidding. Uh, but, you know, it'll sense droids, so it doesn't allow them. And while we're talking about this, I love the way the stairs look. That looks so good. I really think that accurately depicts it. And I'll cover this angle in a second, but I really want to just get in the inside, get a nice detailed look at everything. So first off, we have this corner bar. Now it is extraordinarily difficult to access, uh, but you'd fit about four people back here. Um, you know, there's an, some stud hoppers, just a basic table. It's really, really difficult. Um, oh my gosh, there we go. Uh, you, you can remove the top roof some, which is nice. And I'll show that briefly. I don't want to do this with every side, but basically you pull these off. Uh, you take the panels off, it's just, you know, a little bit of a pain, but it gets some natural light in there. Certainly lets you really appreciate the detail. You also get another one of those Imperial boxes, which is super cool. You also have a nice seating arrangement here where you could sit Momo Nadin and all his friends. There's also another room in here. I love the way they have the little wheel as a table. There's also a mug back there. And back there, it's the same kind of thing, which isn't really that special. Now let's move to the other side. So first off, there are two chairs back here. They're a little hard to see. I'm going to put Cabe, uh, the little bat dude, right back here, uh, which is pretty nice. There's also two more seats uh, as seen on the other side. And then over here is the infamous scene. Uh, so you guys know all what that is. Now, if you remember that special feature I was talking about earlier, um, basically there is this feature where you can push one and you can decide who shoots first. So it's Han or it's Greedo. McClunky. Comment if you see the Easter egg in this photo or screenshot. And the final area is the area for the Bith musicians, uh, which is really nice. So you can get the leader. I'm going to name him Billy Bob. And you could just get the boys in here. You technically could fit five in here um, because there are five Bith musicians. So luckily I have two. So later on, I am going to display all mine together in this set. I cannot wait to deck this thing out. Now let's look at the bar. Love this wooer, but this bar is friggin' phenomenal. Uh, you know, you get, you really don't appreciate it until you see it in person. Uh, so 
I love this thing. You get all the nice bar details, which I'm not going to go too in-depth in. You get all this nice register area. Uh, there's a little dog bone in there, I guess. I, I don't know why. Uh, there's nothing in the bottom drawer. And it is just a overall beautiful area. I love how you could have people stand around. You could say have... You can have your boy Panda get in a fist fight or whatever. Now, let's check out the back room, and then we are going to close up this thing and really see what it looks like from an exterior perspective on the interior. So like all the other doors in the set, this one simply opens up, and it's very hard to get into, so I'm going to do the best I can. But from this angle, this is basically a wine dispensary, so they have some bottles on hold. They also have another bucket back there. And here is a little cantina sign, and it says wanted on there for the droids for 3PO and R2. So I am going to put Luke in here because he owns them. I don't know. Uh, and yeah, so this is area is pretty fun. Now let's take a look at the entire interior. And here is what it really looks like. Just with the figures in this set, it looks so lively. And you don't even see everyone in the booths. I mean, even if you take off the booth, like little covers, it doesn't change it that much. But the bar just feels so cool and i really love it and if you have some of your own like alien figures you customize them around a little bit to make them look a little more you know adventure -y. or you could even make a version from the mandalorian which i kind of want to do i kind of want to make a how to mod this set uh maybe i'll do that in the future and really this pan over this shot alone is worth everything i think it's really really captures the beauty of the set like no other really and I love buildings in Star Wars. I wish they did more buildings. Do to the Naboo Palace. Do pretty much anything. I'm good with anything. Just do some sort of form of building. This is one. This is a good start. Let's keep it going. Let's get the ball rolling. This is just the beginning. And honestly, it is a big set. It is nice. It feels like a Harry Potter set. I want Harry Potter style sets in Star Wars. Please. This has probably been the longest quick review um, I have done just because the set is so detailed, but I wanted to pack as much as I could into this quick thing. So now this is where I get into my thoughts. Now, in terms of the price, $350. Yes, it's a lot. And yes, it is worth it. I know, especially comparing it to, you know, custom sets or different things, this is a 100% worth it. You're getting 18 figures, 21 figures, I'm sorry. Uh, you're getting loads of new exclusive figures. I believe this is the most... Single most ex exclusive amount of exclusive figures in a single set, uh, which is insane. 21. Um, you know, you're getting a great value. The set is a super fun thing to play with. Even if you're not a huge fan of uh, the original New Hope scene for, I don't know why you wouldn't be. It's still great for having his background scenes for if you want to, you know, have a special shop for the Mandalorian. And it can work for Clone Wars. This thing showed up in Clone Wars. Uh, imagine, you know, clones all drinking at a pub. That would be pretty fun. You could have, you know, it be an army bit. I don't know. It could really be anything. It's a good background building to have. Great for animators. Great for pretty much anyone. It's really a functional playset, a functional display model. Although I do think that it lacks, I guess, a little bit in the display department as, you know, other certain Master Builder series sets don't like, say, uh, the Tantive 4, which is up there. Uh, but yeah, that is my really th thoughts on it. And that is, I think, why I'm going to give this set a 10 out of 10. Perfect figure selection. Nearly perfect figures. A few had some problems, but they're pretty good. Fantastic build. Could not have been better. And I love the side builds. They are so great and so generous. Lego, I don't really think, had to do them in order to justify the price. But I think 3000 500 something pieces it's totally worth it and i recommend you should buy but yeah please remember to subscribe hit the bell do all the other things and i hope you enjoy this quick review i'll see you all in the next one remember to peace out and stay awesome